welcome back to the channel or welcome if this is your first time here as it probably is so today we have a solved true crime case that happened in Finland Seinäjoki around five years ago in 2015 before we begin everyone involved in this case is underage and their names have not been released so I will be using names that I saw in a tabloid in an article about this case the names are out there but I will not be using them also if a murder involving minors is something that may upset you it's totally okay to kick away now and watch something else maybe a little something a little happier like like, I don't know, my little pony. As I said, today's case takes place in Seinäjoki, Joppi neighborhood. Joppi is known as the area of better people because there are a lot of fancy detached houses there. Some people had hard times believing that something like this could happen to kids who had financially a better start in life, but of course, everyone has problems regardless of how rich you may or may not be, as we will soon see. In April 28, 2015, a young girl was found dead in a detached house. The Finnish PSAB had received a report of an act of violence committed by an intruder at 2.50 pm and they sent an ambulance and police to the crime scene but they soon discovered that there was nothing they could do for the victim. The big thing was 15 year old girl who we will be calling Nelly. Nelly was someone who everyone loved. She got along with most people and her friends genuinely didn't know anyone who didn't like her. Nelly was creative, athletic and she had the ability to make everyone laugh even on a worse moment. Soon after her death Nelly's social media was filled with thirsting peace comments. Due to the tone of the PSAP call and the fact that they were possibly looking for an intruder, the police went there as fast as possible and heavily armed. And as I said, they were expecting to catch an intruder, but the person they caught wasn't exactly who they expected it to be. At the crime scene, the police arrested another 15-year-old girl. The girl who will be calling Wilma was caught nearby the crime scene and didn't resist the arrest. The police started questioning Wilma the same night. In her first questioning, police asked Wilma if she knew who committed the homicide and Wilma said, quote, I have no idea. I don't believe she did it to herself though, but I'm wondering if someone came to the house while I was in the kitchen. But when I came back, I didn't see anyone. I just saw Nelly lying on the floor. She also claimed to have heard screaming when she was in the kitchen. While the police sealed the crime scene, sealed the area and asked the neighbors if they had seen or heard anything weird, the speculation ran wild on the internet. The very same night, the names of both of the girls were leaked. From the beginning, police was quite sure that this had not been an accident. This was murder. And their first suspect was the girl who had been alone with the victim when the murder was committed, Wilma. It didn't seem like the girls were on bad terms and any recent arguments didn't really come up in the investigation. Since they didn't have anything indicating that this was premeditated, at this point of the investigation the police was talking about a manslaughter. Even though the police never revealed Vilma's identity, the neighbors were giving statements to the press and it was leaked on the internet. According to them, Vilma was a normal teenager, if a bit quiet, she was polite. She was athletic and her father was always driving her to practice. The people Vilma went to shoot with also said Vilma was a completely normal teenager, if a bit quiet and more like a follower than the leader of the group. Soon the cause of death was revealed. Nelly had died from stabbing. She had been stabbed several times in a very violent manner. This part I will have to read from my script because I'm dumb. Sorry. Around three months later, the prosecution applied for extension for the completing of consideration of char char charges. At this point, the charge was changing from manslaughter to murder. District prosecutor Kim Rambinen told the press that this was because the prosecution had requested new examination of DNA and blood splatter found at the crime scene. And after this examination was done, there, there was more questioning to be done. Wilma had also requested psychiatric assessment in the beginning of the investigation. Now, three months since Nelly's death, Wilma confessed to a manslaughter. In her questioning, she told the police that she was shocked that she had taken another human life and she had just kind of found herself holding an knife. In her fourth questioning, she told the police that she felt like she might have used a knife and hit someone with it. Around this time, MTV saw Vinkimie had claimed that both girls liked the same boy and that was the motive for the murder, but the district prosecutor didn't confirm this and claimed that the motive was still very unclear. In September 2015, Vilma was charged for murder. The police was able to prove that the murder had been very carefully premeditated and very cruel. The timeline of events was also released to the press. The school had ended at around 1 pm. Wilma and Nelly had gotten to Wilma's microcar and they had driven to Wilma's house where they had arrived at around 1.50 pm. 
Other girls of their friend group would be arriving soon and they would plan their May Day celebrations. The girls spent around 45 minutes at the house during which they ate and Wilma showed Nelly some new furniture her family had purchased. Then the situation changed quickly when Wilma stabbed Nelly with a knife, giving her no chance to defend herself. After the murder, Wilma called her father. The father called 112 and immediately drove home. It is unclear whether Wilma told her father that there was an intruder or if the father made up the story about an intruder to protect his daughter. The media was not allowed in the courtroom, but when this was announced, the victim's family demanded a public hearing. They claimed that a public hearing would be necessary because this case was very unique. The case had also been told on social media quite a lot and the family wanted to clear any untrue rumors with a public hearing. However, Wilma's defense attorney disagreed and media was removed from the courtroom before Wilma was brought in. Nelly's grandmother gave an interview to a tabloid saying she was very disappointed in the decision and that Wilma should face the consequences of her actions with her own face. So more details about the case were revealed. Wilma's weapon of choice had not been a knife. At first, she had tried to poison Nelly. She had served Nelly juice in which she had poured windscreen washer fluid. She had gotten the windscreen washer earlier from the garage and hid it in her room. However, Nelly noticed the weird taste and didn't drink the juice. Then Wilma suggested some kind of relaxing exercise. She played music and put a blindfold on Nelly's eyes claiming that relaxing would be easier. That's when Wilma went to kitchen and got a knife. Nelly tried to get up and ask for help, but Wilma kept stabbing her. She was also stabbed in the back when she tried to crawl away. Wilma kept stabbing her even after she had collapsed on the floor. When she was already collapsed on the floor, Wilma turned her around again and stabbed her to the chest again. Nelly was stabbed around 16 times in total. The murder took around 19 minutes. The police was also able to find a motive. The girls really had liked the same boy. Apparently Wilma noticed that the boy she liked had been spending more time with Nelly. Tisa started to annoy her around the time of New Year, but she was mostly keeping it to herself. She thought about talking about these feelings with her parents, but eventually she decided not to. The police also found this conversation in a WhatsApp group chat. This is on the 18th of March 2015. Friend, what's wrong? What has he done? Vilma, well, he started spending a lot of time with a girl from my class. And of course, he's gonna be interested in her, because he seems like it. And I won't be able to handle it if he is. Vilma, it's not nice at all. Vilma also tells her friends that she saw Nelly massaging the boy during a break. Vilma, you should see them, because I'll never have him anyways. Friend, you could shoot the girl and then she'd let the boy alone. Vilma, next I'll probably shoot her. For a bit under a month, her friends are trying to make Vilma forget about her cross, but Vilma is feeling down because of this new girl her cross is talking to. On March 19, Vilma tells about how she tried to talk to the boy, but then the fucking bitch came and interrupted. The friends start talking about going to Nelly's house together. They mention her address. Vilma says she'd like to hang the girl. They also use some wallet phrases that I can sensibly translate to English and call her a whore. During the same day, Vilma writes several messages about using violence towards Nelly and snatching the boy. This convo is from March 27, 2015. I'm trying to snap him, but he's just online and so is fucking Nelly. I'd really like to pull a trigger right now. Friend, ah, uh, but that doesn't mean they're talking to each other. Vilma, they were talking anyway, because he went offline at 44 and Nelly at 45. Friend, that doesn't mean anything. Vilma, but... I can take this. They can talk. Friend. Well, what if Nelly sent him something and he just had to reply not to be rude? Vilma. But they go online and offline all the time. 13th of April, 2015. Friend. How's the crush? Vilma. He spends way too much time with Nelly if you ask me. But at least he spent some time with me too. Friend. Oh crap. But yeah, I'm glad he also spent time with you. Are you going to see him today? Vilma. Tell me about it. And I don't know, because he has practice on everything. So yeah, according to the prosecutor, Vilma had started planning the murder a month before committing it after these conversations in the group chat. Vilma's original plan had been to poison Nelly and she didn't want her to die in her house. Instead, she wanted her to die a little bit later. And when things didn't go as planned, she stabbed her. 
In the trial, Wilma appeared confused and remorseful. She confessed to manslaughter but denied murder. She also agreed that she had been talking about violence towards the victim in this group chat but she denied it had been planning the murder, it had just been her venting about her feelings to her friends. On April 9th, Wilma had googled can you die from oven cleaner and searched information about the most poisonous fluids you can find from home. She had also tried to find out how poisonous are coolant, ethylene glycols and gas. A couple of days later, she searched for deadly poisonous mushrooms and poisonous plants. April 16, Wilma searched for a poison that won't kill you immediately but a moment later. The defense claimed that this has nothing to do with the murder at all and the girl was just doing her homework and um, and um, I was 15 when this girl was 15. And I don't think we have the same books. The defense also argued that pouring the windscreen washer in the juice wasn't gonna be deadly and that's not what the victim died from anyways. And um, yeah, sure, she did not. But that's still the dumbest argument I've ever heard. Meanwhile, I don't know if windscreen washer is deadly. She was supposed to die from that. And when she did it, she was stabbed 16 times. During her hearing, the mother of the victim told that at first she couldn't believe that her daughter was dead. That day had begun like any other day. She had asked Nelly if she had plans, which she didn't. Then after work, her car tire had broken and she had called for her husband to come and fix it. When the husband didn't show up, she called him and noticed that her husband was crying. She asked if everything was alright and a moment later, the husband showed up with a social worker and a police. The husband told the mother that their daughter was dead. The mother thought she had gone insane and was imagining everything. I can't even imagine that. That must be so horrific. The victim's mother remembered that Wilma had visited them once for a birthday party. Wilma had talked about how she always had to get the best grade at school and be the best student and it was good that the parents of the victim weren't like that. Nelly had told her mother about the boy she was interested in but the mother didn't think they were dating. For the last month of her life Nelly had been really happy and the mother had thought that something had happened with the boy but she didn't know for sure. The boy was also hurt at the trial. He claimed that he was not interested in Wilma as she was not his type but Nelly had been more than a friend. During her questionings Wilma had talked about how she tried to be more like the type of girl her crush would like and her friends had noticed the change in her. One of her friends had even told her she had changed, but in a good way. From the psychiatric assessment, Wilma got diminished accountability. She had a severe psychotic personality disorder and the forensic psychologist who had examined her claimed she didn't understand what she had done. According to a forensic psychiatrist, Alo Yurilon, there are some issues when it comes to diminished accountability. Diminished accountability means that the person doesn't understand what they've done or doesn't have the ability to control their behavior. Psychiatric assessment also includes two other possibilities. Either the person is deemed fully competent and the crime was committed with full understanding. And then there's the insanity defense, which means that the convict won't be sent to prison and instead they will be sent to involuntary treatment. Diminished accountability is complicated because the lines here are kind of blurry. The fact that there is no obligation for treatment with diminished accountability, if, like if you have severe mental disorder and you get diminished accountability, you don't have to go to treatment. And that's kind of um, contradictory. This is why the use of diminished accountability has been reduced. Apparently diminished accountability is also very desired outcome of the assessment because you won't be sent to involuntary treatment and you get a lighter sentence. And by the way, involuntary treatment in Finland can be very lengthy. Yurilon stated that Wilma had demonstrated extreme cruelty, emotional coldness, ruthlessness and extreme lack of care for another human life as a 15 year old should know that killing other people is wrong. According to Yurilon, it's rare that this kind of really violent murder is committed without like snapping out of it at any point. In his interview, Yurilon also stated that he doesn't think the upcoming sentence will feel right to anyone and Finland should have better obligations of treatment for cases like this. So you can't get a life in prison for a murder committed as a young person, at least in Finland you can't. What you can get is 2 to 12 years in prison, which is quite a huge gap. 
and here the prosecutor asked for 10 years in prison. However, Wilma was sentenced to 9 years in prison. While the district court didn't think that Wilma was planning the murder in the WhatsApp group chat, she still had a relentless intent to kill Nelly. The murder was also deemed very cool as it, la as it lasted for 19 minutes and it probably caused great pain to the victim. She was also sent for involuntary treatment for as long as necessary and this was already decided before the trial. According to a psychiatric assessment, the psychotic personality disorder led to some peculiar behavior and warped her view of her role as a member of society as well as a member of the family unit. She also had to pay compensation for the victim's family. So to clarify, Wilma never went to prison. She was sent to involuntary treatment instead. But somehow the defense was still expecting for a lighter sentence. The defense made an appeal demanding sentence to be reduced to five years, arguing that if she got the five year sentence, the murder would be erased from criminal record after 20 years, unlike with longer sentences. When you get a longer sentence, the crime will stay in the criminal record until the convict turns 90 or dies. The defense also demanded the amount of compensations to be cut in half. The parents of the victim made their own appeal. They asked for a longer sentence of at least 10 years. However, the district court didn't change changed the sentence either way. April 28, 2018, Wilma was released. A convict who's under 21 years old and is convicted for the first time only has to do one third of their sentence. Make it make sense. I think this is complicated. I'm over rehabilitation, I believe in rehabilitation. And Wilma is, she's a young person who's probably been in an intense treatment for the last three years. Like was at, in 2018, you know what I mean. But on the other hand, it feels so fucking ridiculous that in Finland you can commit a carefully planned, brutal murder of another teenager and get up there with three years. This case is also a part of discussion about what makes children kill. While murders committed by children are rare, they happen every now and then and you just have to wonder like what the hell? Like what? What went wrong? What happened? According to psychologist Tom Pakkanen, there's a chance of early and severe development of antisocial behavior. A lot of these kids have started experimenting with drugs at an early age. And of course, there's the behavior of the parents. If the violence is the solution the child sees at home, it's not impossible to imagine that the child results to violence as well, copying the behavior of the parents. However, children are not usually labeled as antisocial right off the bat. With children, psychologists talk about adjustment disorders, etc. and most of the children will never be even close of being criminals. So yeah, that was the case for today. I'm sure this is a case that lots of people have a lot of different thoughts about, so I'm really interested to hear yours, so definitely leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we see you again in another video. Bye!